So a very powerful thing we can do in Houdini is we can create uh, presets in, in parameters of anything. So let's say I have this box here and I want to have, uh, I don't know, I want it to I want this state to be as a, as a preset. So all I need to do is I go here to the cogwheel and press save preset. And let's call this one save preset. Let's do something else. Let's add this. Let's make it like this and go again, save preset and call this two, right? So let's create a new box. And if I go here to the cogwheel, sorry, it's a little bit off screen from the recording. Uh, I can, uh, you see here on the bottom, it keeps our preset. So preset number one, preset number two. Very, very powerful. In Cinema 4D, uh, this is a little bit uh, more hidden, this function, and a little bit more limited, especially in R23. In R25 onwards, in, in I think in R23 onwards, uh, has some more functionality into creating presets of, of your objects and stuff. But... Um, in R23, all the, the, the most uh, easy thing I can do is I can create this and go here, edit and set as default. And whenever I create now a new cube, it will be uh, like this as a default. But there is no way to undo that. Anyways, uh, keep that in mind that um, R23, from R23 and onwards, we have much more control in that area. So back in Houdini, I've created some presets here, let's say. And uh, what... What if I want to have something as a default state of my object? So I found that Houdini, uh, as, as, I, as I showed you with Cinema 4D, which says set as default. So I found that Houdini, if I go here and say save as permanent defaults, it has this, uh, again, off screen a bit. Sorry, I'm going to make it a little bit here. So you see, there we go. So uh, it says here, save as permanent defaults. Let's do that actually. And supposedly it did save it. And here, if you see in the presets, it has it, it stores even this state state it stores it as a preset. So supposedly now if I create a new box, it should be like this. And let's do that. And while it kept this size here, it didn't keep the divisions. So Again, I don't know why this is. Is this a bug? Because as you see, the presets are working fine, but the permanent defaults, now the permanent defaults load. Uh, I, I don't know what's happening there. Keep in mind, it's one of those things that when you think you understood something, Houdini drives you crazy. And um, yeah. So other than that, you saw that we can create presets. Uh, no, right now we have, let's say, three presets. If I want to delete one of them, I can go here and say uh, delete preset. And I, I can, for example, this permanent default, I don't need it anymore. Accept and I'm left with two presets right here. Um, where now, this, this, where, where these are stored in our computer? Uh, so if we go to, everything is in Houdini, is stored in documents in your Houdini version and everything is right here. All your presets or your toolbar, UI, anything, anything. So this is stored inside presets. It creates a folder called SOP because the nodes that we're creating are inside, not in the object context, but they are in the geometry context, AKA the SOPs, surface operators. So it creates a folder called SOP and for each node, for example, this is the box, even if I had 10 presets or 1000 presets in the box, it will keep this under this one file. So it takes the node name, which is uh, by default, this is box, takes the node name and writes all of our presets in here. So very handy, very clever uh, way of managing things. And let's go up one level and create a DOP network, which is a different uh, kind of network. So remember here it's we are in the geometry context and in the DOP we're in the dynamics where we do various operations. So if I if I go here to output and check something like this and say save preset and do one, two, three, whatever, save it. If I go now to my uh, folder in the presets, it has also created a DOP folder. So you see it, it separates nicely my presets and here is the name of the node. It separates nicely the presets between uh, different uh, networks in Houdini. Um, one final uh, detail, 
Uh, something more visual, let's say, that might help you quickly identify what's wrong or what's changed in something because at the beginning everything is so overwhelming. Houdini does the following thing. Whenever you change something, you see that it makes the typography bold, right? It changes the weight of the typography, which is very nice. And now I know that in this node, in, or in order to go to its default state, I can, you know, try and make the typography less bold. Let's say if this is main, you see this is bold as well. So this is one way of doing things. The other way is go here to the cogwheel and say, uh, uh, where is it? Revert to factory default, right? So that also uh, fixes things in the node. You can also go in the property and right click and say, uh, let's change it actually, and right click and it enables this, revert to default, which is control middle mouse click, a very handy shortcut. So this is a way of creating presets in parameters, uh, how you identify that something has changed. Um, I hope it was useful and see you in the next one.